Pekin Community High School District 303 Board of Education regular meeting is now in session. Would everyone please rise and join in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. White, would you call the roll, please? Allison Greeny? Here. Vera? Here. Hill? Here. Oldheimer? Here. Huey? Here. Ridley? Here. Howard? Here. We do have the required quorum to conduct business, so we'll continue with the agenda in front of us. I'll call this meeting to order. First item of business is the approval of minutes. Those minutes being the Labor Management Relations Committee meeting of March 3rd, 2016, the regular board meeting of March 21st, first closed session of that regular board meeting on March 21st, the second closed session of that regular board meeting on March 21st, a special board meeting on April 4th, and then the closed session of that special board meeting on April 4th. Thank you, Mrs. Holmeimer. We have a second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Wrigley. A motion by Mrs. Holmeimer and a second by Mr. Wrigley to approve the minutes as presented. Are there questions, comments, or corrections? Hearing none, Mr. White, would you call the roll, please? Holmeimer. Aye. Wrigley. Aye. Allison Green. Aye. Vera. Aye. Bill. Aye. Huey? Aye. Howard? Aye. Motion carries. Minutes approved as presented. Moving on, we get to our section communications, public comments, and participation. As is our tradition, we'll begin with board applause. And tonight, we'll start with Mr. Barra, please. I would like to congratulate the Pink and Dragon Bass team. Uh, Coach Ortega is in attendance tonight along with Coach Greg Reese, and they were the champions in the 2015 sectional, Zane Ortega, Oren Rockhold, and Michael Shockley. And moving on to Lake Evergreen. Yes, sir. Coming up next. It's a young tradition, but a proud tradition with many achievements earned in the last eight years. So congratulations to them. Mr. Ortega, do you have tons and tons of people who say to you, boy, I wish they'd done that when I was in high school. Yes, sir, and uh, I went back to one of my yearbooks one time, and I happened to find out that Mr. Dave Evans used to run a, uh, an outdoor type club, a fishing and hunting club, and I thought, well, why didn't I see this then? So, <laughs> yeah, did there used to be one called Rod and, Rod and Gun or something? Hunting and Fishing Club, I think is also a yes, Hunting and Fishing Club. Well, I know he was he was really into that. He still is, if anybody yeah. keeps in contact with him. He writes uh, articles for Adventure Sports Outdoors from his place in Minnesota, he and his wife both. And, uh, so yeah, he's still big into it. Well, we appreciate what you do because you created a niche that needed creating and kids are having success with it. It's, it's unreal. <laughs> I bet it is. It is. Thank you. Mr. Allison Dreedy? Uh, ditto, because I had that one also. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some nights are like that. That's right. Well, that's so the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about Mrs. Holmeyer? I'm going to talk about a young man named Nick Campbell. Words like dedicated, motivated, driven, disciplined, polite leader, team player, and resilient were words he used to describe him. Uh, he, he is the epitome of a student athlete. Uh, he's made the honorable mention list in the Illinois High School Association 2016 Academic All-State Team. He has been a three-sport athlete, football, baseball, and basketball, uh, all four years. He's been injured time and time again, uh, and he comes back every single time. Uh, he has a 4.12 grade point average. He's been a member of the Pekin Peers Advisement Committee for two years. Um, wow, what, a, what an example. 
makes me proud to even sit here on this board knowing that fine young men like this go to this school. Congratulations, Nick. Thank you, Mrs. Hoheimer. All of us as board members have said for years that Pekin High is full of all kinds of opportunities. The key is just taking advantage of those opportunities. And clearly this man has done that and done it quite well. How about Mr. Hill? Yeah, my board applause will go out to the uh, Pekin uh, Community High School Skills USA chapter, and, and I think Mr. Huey's going to elaborate on this a little bit, but we had uh, over 2,000 students attend a conference in Springfield. Pekin Community High School sent um, a delegation of students that had, for, uh, this was their first delegation they sent this year, and they had five gold medalists, two silver, silver medalists, and eight bronze medalists. So as a first-year competitor, or uh, school competing, uh, there was 90 competitions offered. It's, it's pretty impressive to see the students do so well. It really adds uh, some great value and, and proves that what we're doing down here in the Career and Tech Ed Center um, is working because not only are they able to compete and compete well against students from across the state, but we're, they're also demonstrating their, their abilities in front of business and industry professionals and, and obviously performing very well. So congratulations to all the students in the chapter and to uh, Ms. Smith and Mr. McCann on, on bringing those students. Thank you, Mr. Hill. How about Mr. Wrigley? Uh, I'd like to extend my uh, congratulations to the uh, Dragon Girls soccer team who recently won a tournament they competed in. I believe it was Friday or Saturday. Um, but congratulations to them. Thank you, Mr. Wrigley. Mr. Huey, how much time do I have? Well, I can tell by your face you look like a volcano ready to go up. Well, you know, we have a saying that appears lots of places throughout the school here that at Pekin High School we do many different things and we do them well. And we've already heard of a number of these, and in the last several weeks we can probably go on and on, but I'd like to highlight three of them. Uh, attended the uh, spring musical the other night. It's phenomenal. It was just excellent. In fact, I heard a uh, high school student say to another one afterwards, I can't believe this was a high school play. It was that well done, or musical, I should say. I was pleased with both the, the talent that was in it and their performance and the number of students who were involved in the, the whole production. It was outstanding. Going from there, we have to mention uh, Mr. Bob Dice's Automotive Tech students who uh, competed in the Illini Conference Automotive Competition. And uh, without listing all the students who won many first places and uh, other high ratings, resulted in the team winning the overall championship. This is not something new to Mr. Dice and his all tech students. They have what might almost be referred to as a dynasty. They've won it so many times. But again, speaks to how well our students are being prepared. Uh, in our classrooms here. It's not all about competition, but it is good to see that when they are pitted against other schools, they do well. And then the last thing, going along with Mr. Hill, uh, I got to attend the uh, Skills USA. He already listed the uh, accomplishments of all of our students down there. But I'd like to underscore one point, or two points. First of all, over 2,000 students from all over the state of Illinois are there. And I always want to make sure people understand that these are not ratings, but actual rankings. If they received a, a goal, they were number one in the state, and so forth. And I think that makes a big difference from other types of competitions. Hence, the uh, students who get a gold award move on to the national competition where we've had some success in the past. Those are just three of many things that have gone on in the last several weeks, but we do a lot of things very well here. Our students do a lot of things, and our teachers do a lot of things quite well. Thank you, Mr. Huey. You make your case very well. Uh, I'd like to direct my board applause to um, Pekin High JROTC. On April the 18th, they attended the city council meeting and they opened that meeting by presenting the colors. Later in that week, Mayor McCabe, who we all have a connection with, proclaimed April 23rd to be JROTC Day here in Pekin. 
Uh, I, think, I think that was a very nice recognition when you stop to think about all the places around this community that those young people go to represent this high school and do it so very well. It was also done um, in honor of the 100 year anniversary of JROTC. Thank you all for your board of applauses. Next item on the agenda is a bittersweet one. Uh, it doesn't seem possible that we're going to say goodbye to Sarah already, but I think we are. And Sarah, the microphone is yours. Well, good evening. Um, I finally got to dress up for you guys. I have a banquet tonight for Notables, so I'm not in my exercise clothes tonight. So um, I just wanted to say thank you for the last year of being able to come and report to you guys. It's been such a pleasure, um, the excitement that you guys have for all the work that Student Council does. And um, it's always been great to come here and report that and be appreciated for that. Um, I also want to thank you for um, helping our school be such a great place. I've thoroughly enjoyed my four years here. And so far, they've been the best four of my life. And I think that's a lot of due to you guys. <laughs> so um, tonight, I have with me our new president, Amanda Rockhold. And I'm going to let her report on committees and tell you guys a little bit about herself. Okay, I'll start with the committees first. We have Senior Sit Prom, which is done, and it was great, and we had a lot of senior citizens come and enjoy it. And then we have Hope Week going on right now, and then Senior Send Off is coming up, and it's just a picnic for the seniors, and we're working on getting that set up and tickets and everything. We also have Teacher Appreciation Week, and we're just working on that too. I am always amazed at how seamless the transition is from one person to the next person. Do you guys go home and stand in the closet and practice this? <laughs> well, you, you sure do it, do it very well. And uh, Sarah, you didn't have to tell us that you enjoyed this past year. It was all over your face every time you came here. And we appreciate all the hard work and effort you put in to keep that big machine called Student Council running. I mean, there, there's a lot of facets to it. And, and uh, knowing the human nature of people, you got to tweak things every once in a while. And, and uh, clearly you did that well. So Amanda, you you got a target to shoot for now. And we'll look forward to seeing you at future meetings. Thank you both. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the place where we have public input. If there's someone in the audience who would like to address the board at this point in time on a non-agenda item, come right up to that podium and, and state your name and, and uh, say what you'd like to say. Hi there. My name is Stephanie Goodwin. My daughter Alexis Salinas attends Beacon High. She's a senior this year. Um, from my understanding that she is not allowed to walk at graduation because she took a credit recovery class right after Christmas break. And I'm here to be her advocate. Lexi, she's my only child. The past four years have been heartbreaking. They've been full of laughter. They've been crazy, very crazy. My daughter suffers from a mental illness She's been under doctors for the past four years. She uh, has been seeing a psychiatrist for the first three years of high school. She has made like a complete turnaround. Her dean, the assistant principal, her teachers, everyone can tell you that in the past year, this child has done a 180 from where she was so sad and depressed and cutting. She went to being a part of flags and going to games and being a part of the high school. Um, the credit class that she took right after, from my understanding it was a four week class, she finished it in a week and a half. Um, her grades, they're not the greatest, but they're not the worst either. And I feel like with all the struggles that her and I have been through, that she should get to walk. She should be able to hold her head high and say, I did it, I survived. I made it through. 
and that's what I'm here for. And I don't know what else to say. Because otherwise, I'm going to get emotional. Um, I understand that she'll get to graduate, just not walk, and and uh, I, I th I'm flying my mom in from Arizona, only grandchild. You know, like I said, this is my only child. It's been difficult, but I want to be right there with her, you know, saying, hey, yeah, we did it. We got through it, and now our next obstacle is college. So I would um, appreciate it. If you guys would reconsider on her, I don't know anyone else's stories. I don't know if anyone else is in the same boat or not. But if you could please reconsider letting her walk, letting her hold her head high, and saying, "I did it. I survived." After everything that she's been through, and I have, um, I have her papers <laughs> with her grades and, and all that, and there is four days on the credit recovery that weren't put in and I from my understanding it wasn't it was like that for all the kids that were in the class and then they finally fixed things so um, I don't know if you guys want these or not or but that's all I have to say first Ms. Goodwin I want to say to you that that although the board is is not obviously happy about the circumstances the board is pleased that you're here supporting your daughter. Um, I'm sure that there's a direct correlation between the progress she's made and the support that you've given her. And so I think that it's good that you're here as an advocate. Um, I need to tell you that, that as a matter of policy, the board doesn't answer things directly. And so don't be offended that we don't give you an answer. Um, I also would encourage you to stay in contact with the administrative team because after years of being on this board, I know that we have an administrative team that cares and if there's a way that they can make this happen, they will do it. So um, if you want to just give those papers to Mr. Healy on the end, we'll see that the administrative team gets them and uh, we thank you again for being here. Thank you for letting me come. I know, I know it takes a lot of a lot of courage to stand and do what you just did and you're to be commended for that too. I think you did a very nice job. Thank you. Yes ma'am, thank you. Thank you for your input. Next item on the agenda will be approval of claims. Mr. President, I move for the payment in the month of warrants in the amount of two million eighty four thousand eight hundred and seven dollars and thirty four cents for her summary information found on page thirty nine. Uh, board bills uh, detailed information begins on page 68 and manual checks begin on page 96 of the supporting material. Thank you, Mr. Allison Greeny. Do we have a second? Thank you, Mrs. Hollander. Motion by Mr. Allison Greeny, second by Mrs. Hollander for payment of monthly warrants as presented. Are there questions, comments, or concerns? Hearing none, Mr. White, would you call the roll, please? Allison Greeny? Aye. Bullheimer? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Monthly warrants will be paid. In addition, you'll find bank balances, district investments, medical care report, and a financial statement, all as of the March 31st date on pages 41 through 44. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next item on the agenda, we have a request for closed session regarding the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the public body or legal counsel for the public body, including hearing testimony on a complaint lodged against an employee of the public body or against legal counsel for the public body to determine its validity. Also, the purchase or lease of real property for the use of the public body, including meetings held for the purpose of discussing whether a particular parcel should be acquired. Also, the setting of a price for sale or lease of property owned by the public body, and also litigation when an action against, affecting, or on behalf of the particular public body 
has been filed and is pending before a court or administrative tribunal, or when the public body finds that an action is probable or imminent, in which case the basis for the finding shall be recorded and entered into the minutes of the closed meeting. At this point, I need a motion for closed session. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Second. Okay. Okay. Mr. Allison Green? Oh, Mr. Baer. Thank you, Mr. Baer. Motion by Mr. Hill, second by Mr. Baer for the board to go into closed session. Mr. White, would you call the roll, please? Hill. Aye. Baer. Aye. Allison Green? Aye. 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 Motion carries. At the conclusion of the closed session, the board will reconvene and continue with board business. Let the record indicate the board is back in open session at 8.14 p.m. Next item on the agenda will be the consent agenda. Before I ask for a motion on the consent agenda, I need to ask the board if there is a board member who would like a particular item pulled out for a separate vote, and if so, now is the time. Mr. President, I'd appreciate it if Jacqueline Johnson would be pulled out for a separate vote. Absolutely. So at this point, I would be seeking a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented with everything listed except for 5.2.1.1.4. And that item we will have a separate vote right after the consent agenda. So right now I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Huey. Thank you, Mr. Allison Greeny. We have a motion by Mr. Huey and a second by Mr. Allison Greeny to approve the consent agenda as presented with the modification that we just listed. Are there questions or concerns on the consent agenda? If there are none, Mr. White, would you call the roll, please? Huey? Aye. Allison Greeny? Aye. 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 Hill. Aye. Wilhelmer. Present. Ridley. Aye. Howard. Aye. Motion carries. Con consent agenda approved as modified and pending background checks as necessary. Now I'd be seeking a motion on the 5.2.1.1.4. Motion for approval for Jacqueline Johnson as a counselor, certified staff. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Allison Second. And Thank you, Mr. Mr. Baer, okay. Thank you. It's hard it's hard to tell sometimes where these voices come from. At my age I hear voices in my head anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought you meant that my voice was so young. Yeah, that was it, <laughs> Mr. Allison <laughs> Drini. Yeah, yeah. A little slow on the uptake. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have a motion by Mr. Allison Drini to approve Jacqueline Johns, Johnson as a counselor, and that was seconded by Mr. Barra. We have questions or concerns or comments? <clears throat> Hearing none, Mr. White, would you call the roll, please? Allison Drini? Aye. Barra? Aye. Hill? Aye. Oheimer? Present. Huey? Aye. Ridley? Present. Howard? Aye. Motion carries. Jacqueline Johnson approved. Next item on the agenda, cooperative boys and girls swimming agreement between PCHS and Tremont High School, Dr. Owens. So I feel like this has been a long time coming, but in front of you on page 153, you will see um, a proposed co-op for boys and girls swimming agreement between us and Tremont High School with us serving as the host school. Um, this is something that if both boards agree uh, on this, then Mr. both ADs, Mr. Kessner, will go to the Mid-Alliance uh, Mid Conference and ask for permission for us to form a co-op. Um, we think that this is a good opportunity not only for the Tremont swimmers, uh, but also a way to also have increased involvement in our swimming program. So I, we see this as a win-win. Um, but it is, um, I'm coming to you tonight um, 
asking for board approval of the Cooperative Boys and Girls Swimming Agreement between PCHS District 303 and Tremont High School District 702 as presented. Thank you, Dr. Owens. Do I have a motion to that effect? So moved. <laughs> Mr. Lee, we can have it. I'll take the second. There you go. Okay. That's the first time I've seen people point at each other. <laughs> that was good. Motion by Mr. Wrigley and seconded by Mr. Hill to approve the cooperative swimming agreement as presented. Questions, comments, or concerns? This is our first time having it. I believe it well. is. And I don't ever remember. Does Tremont seem pretty uh, optimistic that they'll have students interested in, in starting right away? I think they're hoping. I think um, they, they think they have interest on paper from one boy and one girl so they're hoping I mean obviously we hope that that's the start of something bigger but um, we'll see once the numbers come in so because they used to have a co-op with Washington. Washington and it dissolved because of lack of interest on their part so we'll see what happens it's a two-year agreement so we'll see what happens Mr. White would you call the roll please Ridley? Aye. Hill? Aye. Allison Greeny? Aye. Vera? Aye. Wilheimer? Aye. Huey? Aye. Howard? Aye. Motion carries. Cooperative swimming agreement approved as presented. Next item on the agenda possible PCHS art program trip to Los Angeles early to mid June. Dr. Owens again. So it has become commonplace, just like the close-up trip that we come to you. Um, our art students, once again, are competing in the Vans Custom Culture Competition where they paint shoes uh, and submit those for competition. And if they would make it through two rounds of judging and become finalists in that competition, they have the chance to uh, go to Los Angeles, California, and, and most of that trip is paid for by Vans Corporation. But, we come to you tonight because of the length of distance and the fact that it's out of state, both to ask for permission, if that is the case, um, for the Pekin program, uh, art program staff, and several of their students um, to attend the Vans Custom Culture Competition Finals early to mid June 2016 in Los Angeles. Um, asking permission for five students senior Kelsey Begeman, juniors Kelly Bowman, and Julia Evans and freshman Kaylin Naylor and Zariah Weary, um, who have all been selected to participate in the shoe design um, content. Um, our teachers, Katie Holton and Amy Sinus, uh, with one other person, which serve as chaperones, and the rationale for the trip, obviously, is, is in the uh, materials provided. Thank you, Dr. Rhodes. I'd be seeking a motion to that effect. So moved. Second. That Mr. Hill and Mr. Huey. Motion by Mr. Hill, seconded by Mr. Huey, to approve the shoe trip to Los Angeles as presented. Are there questions, comments, or concerns? I just have one question. There's five. If there's five, will all five of them get to go, or is it possible that only two of them get to go? Is it? I believe. Hold on. I'm like, is it one win, they all win, or is it, I mean, is it like a group? I think based on their work and the collaboration of their work that if they're picked, I think they all go. Okay, so there's five of them and two art teachers. Why do they need a third? I'm, guess, I'm guessing is there five girls. I would have to double check on that, but I, I have to check if Zariah is a boy or not, but that really? might be the issue if because both are female she, right. teachers. But I don't, right. I, I don't know that for a fact, but I can check on that. Okay. Any other questions? Mr. White, would you call the roll, please? Hill? Aye. Huey? Aye. Austin Green? Aye. Vera? Aye. Oldheimer? Aye. Ridley? Aye. Howard? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Trip is. Approved should they be successful. Next item on the agenda, 2015-2016 Mid-Illini Conference Academic Awards. Dr. Owens again. 
So you will see on page 116 um, or 160 that the students on the 2015-2016 uh, Middle Line Conference Academic Awards lists um, are in our support materials where they have maintained a cumulative grade point average of 3.0 or higher and earned a varsity letter during their senior year at Pekin Community High School. So you can see the all-encompassing list is pretty impressive. Um, some of those names obviously have been mentioned by board members throughout the years as well. So um, we'd like to recommend board approval to make the names of the 15-16 Middle Illini Conference Academic Award recipients a matter of record as presented. Thank you, Dr. Owens. Do we have such a motion? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Hoheimer. Thank you, Mr. Alessandrini. Motion by Mrs. Hoheimer, second by Mr. Alessandrini to make the Mid-Illini Conference Academic Awards a matter of record. Are there questions or comments? This is great to see so many students uh, excelling both academically as well as uh, um, competitively in the sports arena. I'm just looking at the uh, academic awards now and I see cross country, soccer, football, golf, tennis, basketball, swim, cheerleading, palms. It's, it's nearly every, if not every program. And uh, too often we focus on the negative things of our district. We need to uh, focus on the positive and say that you know, this is an excellent, excellent uh, representation of our students here and their coaches and teachers for that matter. Further comments? Mr. White, would you call the roll, please? Goldheimer? Aye. Aye. Barrow? Aye. Bill? Aye. Huey? Aye. Ridley? Aye. Howard? Aye. Motion carries. Academic awards made a matter of record. Next item. Permission to dispose of surplus equipment. Again, Dr. Owens. We have two cars that we would like to dispose of. Both were donated to Peak and High. One, uh, we don't know the date, prior to 2008. Uh, and another one that was also donated several years ago. Both have um, been used and abused accordingly. Uh, and we would like to strip them for available parts if we still need them and then dispose of those two two vehicles accordingly if we have your permission. So motion for approval. Second. Okay. Motion by Mr. Wrigley and second by Mr. Vera for board approval to dispose of surplus equipment as requested. Questions, comments, or discussion? Hearing none, Mr. White, would you call the roll please? Wrigley? Aye. Vera? Aye. Allison Greeny? Aye. Aye. Oldheimer? Aye. Huey? Aye. Howard? Aye. Motion carries. Equipment will be getting gotten rid of. Next item on the agenda, Dr. Owens, you're getting a workout. This is the resolution for the sale of the 2015-2016 Building Trades House. So it's that time of the year again where we are ready to, almost ready to sell the building trades house that is located in Deerfield Estates. The open house for this property will be May 15th on a Sunday from 1 to 3. The address is 1836. Um, we'd like to read the resolution of the Board of Education of Pekin Community High School District number 303, whereas the Board of Education of Pekin High School District 303 has and does hereby determine that the property described as follows, Lot 141 in Deerfield Estate, Section 6A Subdivision, a subdivision in the City of Pekin, as shown by plat recorded in Plat Book KKK, page 148, situated in Tazewell County, Illinois. Pin number 10, 10, 11, 112024, commonly known as 1836 White Tail Lane, Pekin, Illinois 61554 has become unnecessary, unsuitable, and inconvenient for a public school and unnecessary for the use of the district. Now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Education of Pekin High School District 303 as follows, Section 1, the recital here and above set forth is incorporated herein and adopted as if fully set forth herein. Section 2, the property shall be sold pursuant to the procedure set forth in 105 um, Illinois Code 5-522. Section 3, the minimum price for the sale shall be 210000 
Section four, the superintendent is hereby authorized and directed to sign all documents necessary to convey the above to describe property to the prospective purchasers. And section five, that said sale shall be subject to the terms set forth in the notice of sale attached here to and incorporated herein as exhibit A, which notice of sale the superintendent shall cause to be published for three successive weeks prior to the deadline for the acceptance of bids adopted this 25th day of April 2016 by the following roll call vote. At this point, I'd be looking for a motion to recommend board adoption of the resolution for the sale of Lot 141 in Deerfield Estates, Section 6A, Subdivision City of Pekin, Tazewell County, Illinois. Second. Second. Motion by Mrs. Hoheimer, second by Mr. Wrigley to approve the sale of the building trades house as presented. Are there questions, comments, or concerns? There are none. Mr. White, would you call the roll, please? Hoheimer? Aye. Wrigley? Aye. Allison Greeny? Aye. Vera? Aye. Bill? Aye. Huey? Aye. Howard? Aye. Motion carries. Let's sell that house. Next item, textbook requests for the 2016-2017 school year. Mrs. Bloom. Uh, it's that time of year where we are proposing some textbooks for adoption by you uh, for use in the 2016-17 school year. With uh, several different um, departments presenting books, there were 15 texts in total uh, on display for your review. And it would be um, our request that you uh, that the recommended books are adopted um, for the English, Science, Social Studies, and Special Education departments for use in designated courses beginning with the 2016-17 school year as presented. Second. Thank you, Mrs. Wilhelm. Thank you, Mr. Allison Green. Questions, comments, or discussion? Just like to say for the record uh, and I know you all know this but we moved this up a month to be able to take uh, advantage of the fact that we have some title money that going school-wide title has allowed us the flexibility already to spend and so uh, Ms. Upload's idea was to bring that forward a month early so we can get some of those textbooks bought which um, will play into a report I'm going to give you later but certainly saves the district um, quite a bit of money on the back end of that. Further questions or comments? Mr. White, would you call the roll, please? Wilheimer? Aye. Allison Green? Aye. Vera? Aye. Bill? Aye. Huey? Aye. Ridley? Aye. Howard? Aye. Motion carries. Textbooks will be purchased. Next item staff and student workers for summer 2016 employment. Mrs. Schaefer? Yes, this is customary. We come to you with a list of individuals that we would like to hire for our summer work. I will point out um, this list is a little bit shorter than previous years for a couple reasons. One, obviously to try to save money, and two, due to the work that work is going on this summer and, and a lot of part, a lot of the building, there will be less um, things for obviously for people to do. The, the main thing will be um, the moving crews, and then we also have some um, grounds people. So we would have hire asked to hire three supervisors and they would be working at $11 per hour and we would recommend um, seven students working at $8.25 per hour. So the recommendation would be board approval to employ summer 2016 staff and student workers for the dates and at the hourly wage of rates indicated. Thank you, Mrs. Schaefer. We'd be looking for a motion to that effect. And we have it from Mrs. Holheimer. Do we have a second? Second. And Mr. Huey. Motion by Mrs. Holheimer, second by Mr. Huey to approve the employed summer 2016 staff as presented. Questions, comments? Is the uh, moving crew, are they going to be responsible for helping move some of the building down here, all the equipment upstairs? To moving all of the all the things that need to be moved um, upstairs for central office, and then the things that need to be moved out of classrooms into pods, and kind of the temporary storage situation for all of the rooms. So, because are we gonna have to move like the computers, the all the smart boards? Are we moving everything up? Um, tech, the technology department will handle the computers, but the students will handle all, all of the 
furniture. And it's not necessarily that they all have to move upstairs. Some of them will, some of that will move into storage pods that will have staged outside. Some things will just go in hallways. Like it will just depend on on how they're going to do all of that. But that that will be the majority of what they're doing all summer. It's a big project. And they get to move us back again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> it's not a permit. Someday. Someday. How many things will we lose between point A and point B? <laughs> According to Mr. Um, Clint Rui, there is a method to how they will have all of that label. So. It's not in pod two, it's in pod three. Yeah. 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 Which is an yeah. idea. No, yeah. where's pod three? <laughs> 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 Other questions or comments? Mr. White, would you call the roll, please? Oldheimer? Aye. Huey? Aye. Allison Green? Aye. Vera? Aye. Bill? Aye. Ridley? Aye. Howard? Aye. Motion carries. Good luck and Godspeed to those people. <laughs> <laughs> Next item on the agenda is reports. So we begin with resignations. Mrs. Holheimer. Uh, yes, we have three resignations. We have Jordan Faree, assistant coach of the girls' tennis uh, program effective at the end of the 2015-16 school year. Lisa McKenzie, the vocal music assistant for the cultural studies department, effective at the end of the 2015-16 school year. And Scott Pyle, head director of the drama department, cultural studies department, effective at the end of the 2015-16 school year. Thank you, Mrs. Yes. Mrs. Oheimer. How about policy committee, Mr. Rigley? The policy committee met tonight at 515 in the superintendent's offices. We discussed a number of policies, although I will gladly say not nearly as many as we did last time, and we will be bringing some policies for first read next month. Sounds like a plan. Thank you. How about operations and maintenance, Mr. Alessandrini? We have not met. You, you deserve a break. How about Labor Management Relations Committee, Dr. Owens? Uh, we did meet a few weeks ago uh, for LMRC, and we continued the discussion around how partial sick and personal days would be deducted from people's time off moving to a seven period day. Uh, so it is our belief um, that we will, right now everybody's deducted in fifths. Um, so we'll move to everyone being deducted in sixths. Uh, with the group of people who are certified staff who are not in teaching positions, those people in the counselor's office, special ed office, dean's office, um, and RTI position, that their positions um, will still be deducted in six like everybody else, but if they have time that they need to take for appointments and those things as needed, um, they'll be given uh, the ability to take one of those hours if it happens during one hour of the day um, without getting docked just as a teacher has during their prep um, otherwise everything else will stay similar so the good thing is about this as well is that um, starting next year uh, due to the work on Carla in, in our office's behalf We've been wanting for several years to go to a paperless system where people can risk um, request for time off via uh, Skyward and due to their work on that it's going to be a possibility so I think the person most excited honestly outside of our office is Amy Huebner because she signs on every piece of paperwork that comes across for certified and non-certified um, so she's very excited to be able to click click a few keys and, and get the same thing done it also should expedite everyone's requests throughout the building you know and, and save on some paper too some costs. So, um, so we're excited about that, among other things. Great. How about student achievement? So what you have in front of you um, is something we discussed at the Student Achievement Committee, and that's this document. Um, as you know, Student Achievement Committee has long been a committee um, that has talked about a lot of things that has um, made uh, some difference um, in, in student achievement and, and some big things at peak and high. So now that, <laughs> not laughing when I say it, that seven period days all figured out, now that that's done, um, we do think that one of the things that we would like to do and, and one of the charges that I have had um, for the last two years or for the last year, which naively did not get done, 
um, is figure out better ways to market peak and high and talk about um, what makes us unique and, and get um, some more press to um, pick up on the things that we do well. And as part of that, I do think it's probably time to look at what our mission and vision is. Uh, I don't really want to spend a year doing that work, but I do think a shortened version of that could be done through SAC as well as um, you know to help drive what it is we're trying to market ourselves to be. Um, the, you made reference to the where we do many things and do many things well has been a, a, a model for a very long time here. And so not that it, that's bad, but I think it's time to maybe rebrand what we're doing. And I think the advent of seven period day and, and some changes that we've made, it's probably time to look at um, our vision and mission and, and where we want to go. So we talked about that through SAC and explained to SAC committee that that would be the charge of the SAC committee for next year. Um, so that they were warned in advance um, if they wanted to be a part of that. But you can see kind of the process that um, I would envision that committee taking next year to do that and, and hopefully uh, get some things off the ground. So we're pretty excited about that. My reaction to that was when you're hot, you're hot, and you got to take advantage of those people. They, they, they did a superb job on the seven period day and they're a hard working crew and we're going to utilize their abilities. Thank you. You're welcome. How about FOIA requests? So we've had a few FOIA requests, um, different folder. We did have one FOIA request by the Retired Teachers Association for me to provide who is currently retired, so I'm thinking they're increasing their database. Uh, so that was a FOIA request that we met. We also were um, uh, given a FOIA request by a gentleman um, wanting specifics around concrete work that was done on our building trades house for the past 10 years and how much the cost of that was. So that actually was, that was, that information was sent off today to him. Um, outside of FOIA, the other thing I wanted to um, bring attention to is this was our first um, plan or thought around marketing and so this actually is being bulk mailed to all our parents of our of students in our district um, so this will go out and on Wednesday morning we'll actually hot link it to Facebook and Twitter and I don't even know if that's a term I just made it up but um, and, and our web page is a hot link it's a hot link it's better than a cold link but I don't know anyway so it will be um, I also gave this to Sharon Harris at the Times, and I believe potentially there's an article for tomorrow in, in the Peking Times around 7 30 day again. So um, we thought it was important to get that out. So the only other thing that I have is um, in response to all the doom and gloom that is around us, I, um, I had promised. I had promised to provide all of you some information um, with all of the information that keeps hitting the press um, about what is happening to schools, what potentially will happen to schools if we don't have a budget in the state of Illinois, um, and if or if we do have a budget, but yet um, the state aid is calculated differently. So what we have prepared for you are a couple different scenarios so that you can see um, some raw numbers in front of you. So if you get hit up by people in the public in terms of, as I do, are we gonna open our doors? Um, we can, can speak legitimately to what's going on. The first page you have in front of you is what the numbers we were operating off of and, and hopefully are gonna continue to operate off of. But what you will see, and, and Carla's going to jump in here if I miss any points, because obviously the numbers came from her. So um, if I miss anything, she's going to save me. So um, the first page are, uh, we've shown you the actual 14-15 budget. We're showing you right now where we're running in the 15-16 budget. We do think we'll end better than that number of a $551,000 deficit. Um, we, we do think that number is going to be better, but of course we've got a couple more months in this fiscal year to get through before we can put any solid numbers in front of you. The projected 16-17 budget is the budget that we have as most like up to date as we can after going through budget hearings, after talking about ways to save some money. Um, so hopefully 
knock on wood, if all of the money would come in that's promised, big if, probably not going to happen, but if that would happen, um, what we would like to say is even with the advent of a seven period day, we actually would see an ending fund balance, balance that went up due to what you see down below. Cost savings and staffing, uh, cost savings in textbooks, that's what we alluded to. The ability to use title funds for textbooks saved us $37,000 in our budget for next year. Um, our, our move to a different auditing firm is going to save us $11,000. Um, our software savings alone is hopefully going to be close to $40,000. We are going to move away from Blackboard next year and go to a learning management system called Canvas. Um, and so we're pretty excited about that. The teachers seem to be excited about that. Those that looked at it, it's a lot more user friendly. And from a bottom line, it's a lot cheaper. So, um, and if you remember, we did a huge network upgrade last year over the summer that was a quite a bit of money. Hopefully some of that we will still get in E-rate funding, but we don't have that yet. I mean, we're hoping to still get $90,000 back from E-rate funding, but we don't have that, and that will be something that we won't be doing. Obviously, we don't need to do a network upgrade every year, so that will be another cost savings, a huge cost savings of $221,000 for a total of $429,000. So what we went to work on is the day after that article came out that we are potentially going to have to repay, right, $409,000 to cease. CPPRT. Um, that I mean, I think you can show that we can show that we we've, we've made that up. One thing to note, though, what this also includes, you'll see a transfer of four hundred thousand dollars. That's where we have discussed moving the interest out of working cash um, to be able to cover some of those expenses. This also potentially looks at some cost savings, depending on what we do with insurance. One of the things that originally was on the agenda for tonight was our insurance rates for next year, but we've actually asked um, Simonis to go out and, and get us fresh numbers and competitively look at um, people outside of just United Healthcare to see if we can competitively get some of those rates down to keep that competitive, because obviously that all affects our bottom line and, and hopefully gives us more cost savings. So that's still yet to be determined, um, but those, hopefully that will, come to fruition. So that's plan A. States tell us have a plan A, have a plan B, have a plan C. So this is plan A, best case scenario. Plan B is the next slide or next page. And that is assuming we don't get any state revenue. So meaning if we get no general state aid for an entire year, what would things look like? I don't think that's going to happen, but there is a chance that we would start the year with no general state aid, and that's where you're starting to hear things hitting the press. Are we going to open school? Are we going to have fund balances to be able to open the doors? So what you can see is because of our fund balances, we absolutely can open the doors. We absolutely can operate for a year with no general state aid, but what you will see on the bottom line doesn't look very pretty that in 1617, if we got no general state aid at all, even with all the savings we've recognized, our fund balance would go from seven million to just over four million in one year. So that, that would be a huge hit. I, I don't think that's going to happen. I do think there's a possibility we don't get general state aid to start the school year, and then they finally get a budget or something presses that to happen. And I think there's a potential we don't get paid back what they miss payments on. I, I think that's no different from at the end of the year them contacting us and saying we're not going to make our two final payments, which obviously that's happened before. So I, I do think that we won't lose all of that money, um, but but there's a potential we're, we're going to see things that we can't recoup. What you also saw in the paper the week before the $400,000 hit that we took last week was Browner's plan to um, fully fund right, uh, general state aid, but in his equation, which he didn't release what the equation was, but we lost $200,000 in that. Um, primarily because, from what we can understand, our enrollment is decreasing 
and um, our local wealth is increasing. Not by a ton, but our EAB has gone up and the number of students in our district has gone down. And so what you're seeing and what you're seeing reported out there is what's called reverse Robin Hood. So the poor districts are actually losing money and the wealthier districts are gaining money. I don't think that has any legs based on the politics in Illinois, <laughs> but one never knows. So, um, so that is the second page. Am I missing anything? And then the third page is absolute worst case. Danielle doesn't come to work for it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, this would be assuming no state revenue, so no no general state aid, and if the state came after us next year and said that four hundred and nine thousand dollars that we overpaid you we want it all back in one year okay so that's worst case so what you see there is the projections for that first year alone go our, our fund balance now this is just the education fund would go from seven million dollars to three point six million dollars um, again that's worst case scenario they haven't told us how they're going to expect to get that money back um, we've kind of gone back and forth maybe they would just take it off next year's payments um, the other issue though that's long lasting is what we get in corporate personal property replacement tax does go into the equation to figure our general state aid so not only are we going to have to pay back the four hundred thousand dollars but it will impact what we get in general state aid, and that will has the potential then to go down. So state aid might actually go up. But if they don't pay it, then right. So I mean, right. That that was going to be my right. question: is is if, if the corporate personal property tax is part of the formula for general state aid? Right. Are they going to cap go back and calculate for the previous years when? Because we really should get more state aid. In the, has there been any talk of that? We've had, we've had no correspondence from the Department of Revenue. The first time we heard of it was when it came out in the news. And since that time, we've got nothing. Okay. So I I've read that they're going to try to um, do this over the course of two years, but no one has said, because this affects villages, cities, I mean, other, other, unit, other governmental bodies that aren't just school districts. They haven't addressed. How that's going to affect general state aid? I, I know there's uh, several districts that, uh, at least up north, of you know, are threatening lawsuits and those type of things. And that that was one of the things that was coming up from that. Are they going to go back and recalculate? But when you aren't paying general state aid, you're prorating it. You can just say, well, we just prorated another two percent less. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think you could assume we're not going to. I mean, assume the worst and assume you're not going to get that back in state aid. Either. So you're you're not expecting them to ask for a check. For Hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. I mean, I honestly, that's what I thought. I don't. I, I can't imagine. That's, I mean, when I read the article, I was like, "Yeah, they're gonna ask for all this money back." Yeah, I can't imagine that would be possible to do. Um, well, I think they could ask for it. We assumed that. that the that won't allow that to happen. But I think the, the. I mean, obviously, this paints a pretty bleak picture. Um, one of the thoughts is that this information will be shared with the faculty in May by me um, so that people are, are at least understanding where we're at. Obviously, there are people way in front of me that work very hard for this district to have fund balances for rainy day purposes, right? I'm not sure the rainy day purpose is supposed to be two politicians who can't get along in Springfield and we're all suffering because of it. Pretty sure that was not what the rainy day scenario is. And that may not come to fruition, but I think it's important for everybody to understand why the decisions are being made in the district of you know, what positions are posted, what positions aren't posted, why are we filling positions, why aren't we filling positions, you know, and, and different things. Like, I do think we found ways to, to make to save money on things that are big ticket items, but I, we've already had this conversation, just like we have a five year O&M building plan, I think it's important for us to start working on a five year deficit reduction plan and, and what that looks like, right? Best case scenario, worst case scenario, here's where we can cut, here's where we don't need to cut, and maybe none of that comes to fruition, but at least we have a game plan of, of knowing how that could happen as we move forward. So um, 
so that we can continue to do the things that we think are important and hopefully affect you know the least amount of people that we can but but still have a plan so for years for years dr owens i've told family friends and anybody that would listen to me that the state of illinois was number 49 in terms of school funding well now they've change that number and or number 50. So they're moving in the wrong direction. <laughs> well, the beauty about being on rock bottom, there's only one way to go, right? That's up, you get better. It, not gonna win, probably not. But no, it, it's it's really quite a shame that, that two politicians in, in Springfield can have such a negative effect on people like this and good people students because that's really what it comes down to it comes down to our children that we're negatively affecting because we're clinging to our politics it's nothing to be proud of and i agree with that but we have to be lucky that we're not having conversations about whether or not we're opening the doors in august we're, we're lucky that we've had um you know and i commend our board members that have been sitting on here far longer than i have for having the the foresight and having a uh, great administrative staff at the foresight to um, plan for the rainy day because although this wasn't the rainy day we were expecting <laughs> it's raining pretty hard outside so um, congratulations to for, for you guys for for working on this and, and be glad that we don't have to worry about opening the doors in August thank you dr. Owens next item on the agenda uh, pursuant to our board policy we have board reorganization at this point, I will be looking for a nomination for the Office of President of the Board of Education. Do we have any such nominations? Mr. President, I nominate uh, Eric Hill for the Office of President of the Board of Education. Thank you, Mr. Wrigley. Second. Do you nominations require a second? Uh, well, Hang with me a minute. Are there are there further nominations for the office of president? Seeing that there are not further nominations, I would request to alter the motion to be such that we declare nominations closed and we elect Mr. Hill board president by unanimous consent. Does that motion meet with the approval of the maker? It does. Does that meet with the approval of the seconder? It does. Okay. Now, Mr. White, would you call the roll, please? Ridley? Aye. Huey? Aye. Allison Greeny? Aye. Vera? Aye. Bill? Present. Oheimer? Aye. Howard? Aye. Motion carries. Congratulations, Mr. Hill. You're the new president. You get to take over. Next order of business will be the nomination and election for the Office of Vice President of the Board of Education. Be seeking nominations for that position. I nominate Mr. Howard. Are there any other nominations for Vice President? I nominate Karen Holheimer for the Office of Vice President. Are there any other nominations for Vice President? I move that we close nominations. Motion is made to close nominations. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Mr. White, will you call the roll to close nominations? I'm sorry, who moved it? Thank you. Mr. Allison Green? Moved. Mr. Wrigley seconded. Allison Green? Aye. Wrigley? Aye. Vera? Aye. Oheimer? Aye. Howard? Aye. Huey? Aye. Bill? Aye. Motion carries. The nominate. The floor has been closed for nominations. At this point, we have two nominees. These. Uh, In my 21 years, this is never 
happened. And in my mind, the way you would do it is you would call roll, and instead of having the person say yay or nay, you'd have them say the name of a candidate. Would you agree, Mr. Allison? That is the correct procedure. So at this time, the uh, I will be looking for a motion to elect the next vice president, and those two candidates will be Mr. Howard and Mrs. Hoheimer. Mr. White, will you call the roll? Allison Greeny. Howard. Barrett. Hoheimer. 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 Howard. Howard. Huey. Howard. Ridley. Hoheimer. Hill. Hoheimer. Karen Hoheimer will be nominated as Vice President for the Board of Education. This time I'd be seeking a motion for the election of Office of Secretary. Is there anybody who wishes to nominate for someone for that position? I'd like to nominate Ryan Wrigley for the Office of Secretary. Are there any other nominations for secretary? This time I'd like to amend the motion to reflect unanimous consent of Ryan Wrigley as being elected to the office of secretary. Would you be all right with that motion? Yes. I'd be looking for a second to that motion. Second. Second by Mr. Vera for Karen, or I'm sorry, for Ryan Wrigley to be nominated as Secretary of the Board of Education. This time, Mr. White, will you call, or I'm sorry, this is through unanimous consent. I apologize. So, Mr. White, will you call the roll? Hoheimer? Aye. Vera? Aye. Allison Greeny? Aye. Howard? Aye. Huey? Aye. Wrigley? Present. Hill? Aye. The motion carries, and Mr. Wrigley will. Uh, be seated as secretary. The next item on the business will be to establish a calendar uh, containing the dates for the regularly scheduled board meeting, the regular scheduled meeting of the Peking Community High School District Number 303 Board of Education. I would be looking for a motion to approve that those meeting dates. Motion for approval. Motion by Mr. Wrigley, second by Mr. Ho Mrs. Holheimer. Mr. White, will you please call the roll. Wrigley, aye. Holheimer, aye. Allison Greeny, aye. Vera? Aye. Howard? Aye. Huey? Aye. Bill? Aye. The motion carries. Next item on business will be the adoption of board policies, procedures, and resolutions. Be looking for a motion to approve those policies, procedures, and resolutions. Second. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion by Mrs. Hoheimer. Second by Mr. Vera. Mr. White, will you please call the roll? Hoheimer? Aye. Vera? Aye. Allison Greeny? Aye. Howard? Aye. Huey? Aye. Wrigley? Aye. Hill? Aye. The motion carries. 7.6, establishing of the fiscal year for Pekin Community High School. Be seeking a motion to establish the fiscal year of Pekin Community High School as July 1st through June 30th. Do I have a motion? Second. Second. Motion by Mrs. Hoheimer, second by Mr. Wrigley. Mr. White, will you please call the roll? Hoheimer? Aye. Wrigley? Aye. Allison Greeny? Aye. Vera? Aye. Howard? Aye. Huey? Aye. Hill? Aye. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda will be announcements. I uh, just want to remind everyone that Dragon Pride will be, or I'm sorry, I skipped an item. Are there any future agenda items that any board members would like to see on the end? Next agenda. So I'll move us into announcements. Uh, just a reminder, the Dragon Pride will be Wednesday, April 27th from 6 to 8 p.m. in the Hawkins Gym with uh, an award ceremony at 7.30. Uh, students who have received nominations for leadership, academic citizenship, and effort from each department will be recognized. The 2016 induction ceremony for the National Honor Society will take place Monday, May 2nd, beginning at 7 p.m. in FM Peterson Theater with a reception to follow in the cafeteria. 
The ISA, IS, IASB Central Illinois Valley Division meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, May 4th. As a reminder, we just voted on uh, setting a minimum bid for the Building and Trades House. We will have an open house scheduled for Sunday, May 15th from 1 to 3. That address is 1836 White Tail Lane in Deerfield Estates. We uh, would ask that all board members and any, any members in the audience attend that uh, open house and see what our students are doing. Senior Academic Awards Recognition Ceremony will begin at 530 p.m. on Thursday, May 19th, and will be immediately follow, or will, and back glory it will immediately be following it starting at 7 p.m. in the F.M. Peterson Theater. Commencement is scheduled for Sunday, May 22nd, 2016 at 2 p.m. in the stadium, pending any weather conditions that will be at the stadium. And finally, uh, the district's annual luncheon, recognition luncheon, will be held Wednesday, May 25th in the cafeteria. And do we have a start time for that luncheon? Right about one o'clock. Start at one o'clock. Okay. We we have no mandatory attendance day anymore, and so that luncheon will will be right after the first day of finals is over. Was it which is at one o'clock? So I would anticipate people starting to make their way down. It'll be a sit down meal, and um, we'll honor our retirees, and then people can stay and socialize, or they can go back and grade final exams. There. <laughs> <laughs> then the next. Item will be the next scheduled board meeting will be Monday, May 23rd at 6.30 here in the boardroom. And one final order of business, I think, Dr. Owens, I think you have something. I do. I have a presentation for Mr. Howard on behalf of ourselves, the administration and the Board of Education. Just thank you for your service. Uh, primarily, thank you for your service, not only on the board, but as well as in the Office of President. You've served quite a number of years. So we have a plaque for you um, detailing your years of service to this board as president and I just want to personally say thank you to you um, for putting up with me for the first year of my tenure as superintendent which has been an interesting one at the very least but um, I personally and I, I know our administrative staff thanks you very much for all of the time and dedication and we always know that you're in our corner and we truly appreciate that so this is from us to you and you will acknowledge and I have told you before it's been my honor and pleasure thank you appreciate it No further business to come before the board, so I declare this meeting adjourned.